So, and that's, that's one of the things I find really fascinating about you is you occupy this space uh, between high net worth individuals who want to jump into the ring of cool in film, uh, traditional um, media companies, uh, distribution companies, studios, and so on, and then auteurs, you know, filmmakers, artists, and you're the one who has to make the sausage. You're the one who has, you know, you know what goes into it. It's ugly. It's, it's grueling. It's it's not it's not pretty. Um, you have to appeal to all these different, uh, you know, groups that you, that that are all having. To, you're you're the nexus bringing them together. Yep. Did you, was that something you learned along the way? Uh, well, I, I, was, I was very fortunate because I, I, um, when I was 10 years old, I had grown up in a very kind of normal English uh, kind of upbringing. Um, my mom fell in love with an American movie producer uh, when I was around 10, uh, became my stepfather. And he was a very successful agent in the, in the 60s in America. He worked for MCA and then became a very successful independent movie producer in his own right, made 80 movies. And um, I, I started watching him uh, and got very interested very quickly in what he was doing. We would visit movie sets and meet actors and meet directors. And I would watch how he interacted with the, with the filmmakers he was working with and how he interacted with the stars and how he interacted with the studios. So I really must say that it was like, it's like growing up with an athlete, you know, if you want to be an athlete too and kind of get learning the, the ropes in a way. And by the time I was 15, I was like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be up all night on the telephone yelling and screaming at people and <laughs> chomping on cigars. Right. You know? I was say, cigars. He was the absolute classic epi epitome of a Brooklyn Hollywood movie producer with a big cigar like, kid, you'll never, you know, you'll never make it in this town and all that kind of stuff. You know? So I, I had a feel for, um, and my brother's an actor, Carrie Elwes, who actually we went last night. He, uh, they, uh, Jason Reitman had a reading of The Princess Bride here, which is, you know, he does these readings, and my brother played uh, Wesley again. Oh, amazing. was like a rock star arriving in that, uh, <laughs> that cinema last night. So I got also a feel for how artists kind of think, because my brother, you know, my brother, is, is the, he and I personalities are quite different. He really is an actor and uh, in every way. And so I got a feel for two of how um, actors think and behave and, and, uh, and how, um, how to deal with, you know, filmmakers, Filmmakers was something, you know, I'd, I'd made 30 movies before I went to William Morris, so I, I already had made films and worked with a lot of filmmakers, but I must say that, I, that, that the directors that I worked with, there were a couple of ones that were real artists. Um, uh, Donald Camel, who sadly is, is no longer alive, we did a movie called Why the Eye, and he was a true artist, but his methodology was to create as much chaos as possible on the set. <laughs> I uh, know people really, like that. Really create chaos because he thought true art came from real chaos, and he wasn't wrong. That was a way of doing things. Emilio Estevez, who's a great pal of mine, and, and we did Men at Work together, and he was acting and directing at the same time, so I really got to feel like how that dynamic can work, which is quite difficult. And, um, but I can't say that, I, that I, when I went to William Morris, one of the first directors that I got to work with, and I made five movies with him, was Gus Van Zandt. And Gus Van Zandt is an idol of mine. I, I, you know, My Own Private Idaho is one of my favorite movies, uh, uh, independent movies ever made. And uh, I had the privilege to get to work with him on, on films like Elephants and Paranoid Park and Milk and um, uh, really got a feel for the, how true artists think about making films, how they think about money, how they think about making the, the, the working with actors, how they think about the final product, how they think about the cut. And, and really, he, he took me under his wing, actually, in a very sweet way because uh, he knew that I could help him too, you know, money, the, the distribution and all of that were things that he wasn't so interested in. I mean, obviously he was interested in the success of the movie, but he didn't want to do the business part. He really trusted me with doing that for him. And um, I really learned how to, how to navigate that kind of business well with an artist and, uh, and gave me an incredible education for how to deal with other true artists. And, and you know, William Morris, I made uh, close to 300 films for the agency. And so I got to work with some of the greatest filmmakers in the world. And I, you know, uh, and I never was intimidated by any of them. And I think that they, they also felt too that they had a chance to work with somebody who was really good at this part of the game. And, uh, and therefore, they trusted me. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm, it was a great privilege from, I think they felt that, the, the, you know, it was my privilege to work with them. And I think they felt very comfortable with me too by the end. You know, we were really in a, in a place of uh, where I knew what I was doing so yeah. well.